What's up guys, Mydicus here. I'm your coach for the Boston Beedrills. Today we are team building for week four of the APA. We're going against the St. Louis Rampardos and coach A-Drive. I'm sure you know him and follow him very closely. Uh, and you're probably coming over to this uh, video from either his team builder, if he posts one, or his battle in general. Um, and, or I'm sure the majority of you will. Um, and so first and foremost, thank you for checking out my channel. I really do appreciate that. Um, hopefully, uh, if you are watching this video post battle, um, hopefully we picked up a win. That would be great. Um, and if, if not, then we're 0 and 4. Uh, so hopefully that's not the case. But if you are a subscriber of my channel and that's why you're here, thank you so much for your support. It means the world to me. Um, and I, I honestly, um, here in the last few weeks, the support has been uh, much, much better on the channel. And I, I really, really appreciate that. Every single comment or like or share um, or new subscriber really, really means a lot to me. And, um, you know, being a small channel, that, that's going to mean a lot. Uh, because every single one of you are making an impact uh, in my day-to-day -day life and the the fact that I can continue to feel motivated to do these battles even though I'm losing uh, fairly horribly at the moment so uh, thank you for for joining me uh, for this video I, I really do appreciate it um, please feel free to leave a comment um, just kind of telling me what you're thinking about on this channel how have I been doing as far as delivering the content I know the battling has been subpar but you know that that's something that I'm trying to change and hopefully we'll we'll see some progression there but uh, I'm definitely more focused on making sure that I'm delivering entertaining content to you guys because I mean you shouldn't be watching anything that's not entertaining so uh, that that's my job and um, also in the comments, let me know what you think of the team I'm about to present to you. Um, currently, you can kind of see the first guy we're going to go over, but uh, we'll go over the remaining six I'm bringing. Just, just let me know what you think of the team. Uh, let me know if you had any ideas that I could have done differently with this team. Obviously, it'll be a little too late to actually do those ideas, but um, I'm still really intrigued on um, on things that I can learn from from this. Uh, I do have a great front office helping me with the uh, with these teams every single day. Um, I've been busy and they've been a little bit busier than usual this past week but we've still got a lot of prep in and I still think we have a fantastic team um, with a little bit of heat mixed in this week hopefully to catch some uh, to catch a drive off guard uh, it's a pretty smart dude though so it's a little tough to do um, but that being said uh, you know what I'm gonna go ahead and let you know uh, who my front office is because these guys are they're freaking fantastic um, and just to make sure I don't forget anybody, um, they got Obo29, uh, we have uh, Scotty Dr. Pepper, uh, Ogilbina, Ogilbina, I'm sorry dude, I, I don't know how to pronounce your name, um, Roguran, again, I have no idea how to pronounce your name, let me know um, in like Discord and I'll try my best to pronounce it right, uh, and then we have Shy Guy Serpent. Um, in this particular week, we brought in an all-star to help us because this battle means so much this week. We actually brought in um, co-commissioner Panther to help me. He didn't get to help me as much as I would have liked, but um, he, he didn't really give me any ideas to implement, but he kind of let me know what he thought about the team and what I should watch out for as far as A-Drive's team goes, which is helpful, super helpful, um, and kind of things that I should... Uh, lean towards in battle um, so none of these sets really come from him in particular that's mostly from the other people in the front office um, and then we have Link for Dan who kind of doesn't contribute at all but he's there in my discord um, and he <laughs> he doesn't say much he doesn't say anything honestly but he's there so Link for Dan if you're watching this what's up man say hey in the chat sometime um, but yeah so <laughs> That is, that's my front office, and they're, they're some fantastic guys, and I really appreciate them. They're, they're putting in a lot of hard work, trying to help us get our first win this season, and it'll come. 
Uh, I don't know if it'll be this week, but it'll come. And uh, I'm proud of those guys. They helped me so much. And um, I'm hope I'm just trying to get a win for them more than anything else. Like, I want to see their hard work pay off. So uh, this would be a huge win for us if we can pick up a win against the St. Louis Rampardos. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see. Um, let's go ahead and jump into the actual team builder itself. And let me kind of go over real quick uh, Dan's team. And that way we're going to be able to um, kind of see what he's dealing with. Unfortunately, I don't have his team in front of me. So I'm pulling it up right now. Uh, because you see the layout right now with his team on it. But um, during recording, I don't actually have that on the layout. That's kind of done post-production. Uh, so let me just pull up his stuff here. Okay. So he has a Mega Lot Bunny, which is so incredibly scary for me. Um, I mean, it's a Mega Lot Bunny. It's got Fake Out and Quick Attack, which are huge stab-boosted priority moves. Uh, which are going to give me a lot of trouble if he brings one or the other or both. I don't think he brings both, but if he does, it's just unfortunate. Um, I mean, this thing is a heavy, heavy attacker. Uh, currently right now, it's been in two games out of his uh, three that he's played. He's got five kills. Um, so that, that's, that's pretty intense. Uh, he has Sylveon, um, which... He's brought to all three games. Um, it hasn't got any kills yet, so that's something to look, kind of look at. Hydreigon, uh, Tapu Bulu. Um, his next kill leader would be his Tapu Bulu, who actually has, I'm sorry, no, he only has one kill. Uh, no, two kills. His Neo King um, has one kill. Okay, so nothing too tremendous there. Cabellion, that's his second kill leader. Uh, he has. Three kills. Three kills uh, with Cabellion. Uh, Volcanian, one kill. Cofagragus, two kills. Stakataka, zero kills. Misharno, one kill. Rotom Frost, he hasn't brought yet. So he hasn't brought Rotom Frost yet, and he hasn't brought Stakataka. Stakataka, yeah. Everything else he's brought. Um, so again, Sylveon, bulky, bulky, bulky. We're going to have to hit that thing on the defensive side. Hydreigon, scary. Probably going to be a choice set, um, I think. Maybe choice specs, maybe choice scarf. More leaning towards this choice scarf. Um, Tapu Bulu is actually pretty scary. Uh, and it's kind of pretty much make me bring my Salazzle just for that. Uh, Nido King Scarf is also super scary for our team. Um, just because its stab moves aren't going to feel great. Um, and then it's coverage with like Thunderbolt and Ice Beam uh, is going to take out things like my Latios or uh, my Don Fan. Um, Thunderbolt's going to take out like the Alamomolo or the Mega Gyarados. Uh, and then he has Volcanion. Oh, I'm sorry, next is actually Cabellion, which is actually also pretty scary. I do have Latios to kind of uh, go against that, but Cabellion is still pretty scary. Bolt Switch gives them the, the pivot move to kind of move around my team. Volcanion's pretty scary, uh, especially like a choice spec set, that'd be pretty scary. Um, just because it's two stab moves are going to hit so hard with Steam Eruption and Fire Blast or Flamethrower. Uh, Cofagragus is going to be just a wall that I'm going to have to figure out how to break. Uh, stack Attacka is scary behind the Trick Room. It can actually do a ton of damage to us if we're not uh, aware and we let him set up a Trick Room. That thing could go bonkers on us. Uh, Mashara is another wall that we have to be careful about and be able to break um, so it doesn't stick around too long. And then the Rotom Frost um, is interesting. If we can get rocks up, I'm not as afraid of it. Uh, its stab move for ice is pretty much Blizzard, and that's only going to hit 70 or 75% of the time. It does have Volt Switch to give him momentum if he wants to go that route, uh, and it could be his Defogger as well, but. He's not going to really appreciate coming in on those rocks. Um, what else is his defogger or rapid spinner? Uh, wow, does he not have another defogger or a rapid spinner? Maybe I'm missing something, but um, unless Hydreigon gets defog, which it, I guess it could, um, that's 
all I'm really seeing. Wow, okay, that's interesting. I don't think I actually realized that until just now. Um, so yeah, that's his team, guys. Um, and let's go over my team. First and foremost, we have the Skarmory. This thing is built to take on the uh, the Mega Lock Bunny. That, this thing stops Lock Bunny in its tracks. Thunder Punch, it takes it. High Jump Kick, it takes it. Um, any of his normal stab moves eats him up. Uh, he's got a little bit of special defense, and that's going to be th for things like uh, like a Volt Switch on Cabellion, I think. That's going to allow me to uh, be able to roost that damage off um, if he runs a, a particular EV spread. Um, the special attack can also help me with uh, Nido King. Although the Nido King, even that special attack, if it hits a Thunderbolt, it's going to hurt tremendously. So not not as much that um, it's going to allow me to eat a uh, Draco Meteor, or at least allow me to roost it off, uh, and then allow me to take things from Sylveon, maybe like HP Fire or HP Electric, uh, things like that. Uh, and then Volcanion, uh, no, it's not going to help me with any, uh, anything to do with Volcanion, so that will not be something I want to keep in against Volcanion. Uh, so, we have Brave Bird, Roost, Stealth Rock, and Defog. Uh, so Stealth Rock, we just went over, that's going to be very, very important for us. It's going to damage things like the Volcanion, make sure its uh, switch-ins are very limited. Uh, the same thing goes for the um, uh, Rotom Frost, and everything else is just going to kind of be chipped away ever so often as he, if he tries to do like a, a Volt Turn set with like Hydreigon, Rotom, uh, or Cabellion, it's just going to limit the amount of times that they can continue to come in uh, and pivot around. So Stealth Rocks are going to be super important for us. Uh, Defog is going to be very, very important um, for not Skarmory, really, because he doesn't he only gets like 12% from the rocks I think but some of the other mods that you will see here in a moment it's definitely gonna help support them uh, we have the rocky helmet to make sure that lot bunny gets punished for uh, clicking any kind of physical move um, and then we have sturdy for maybe a particular case where I can click brave bird and do a tremendous amount of damage to something uh, or stealth rocks or maybe I just need to get the defog off so that's what we're running with with the Skarmory um, and let's go to the second mod which is going to be a Selgord. Now this thing has really two purposes. Um, there's two mods that I want this thing to counter. That's going to be the Nido King and the Cabellion. Um, both of them in most cases I can find on Gambit and knock those things out straight up. Um, especially with the Choice Scarf I'm going to outspeed everything on his team um, and I can click Final Gambit on something and unless it's uh, things such as the Masharna um, or uh, the Fagragus maybe, anything with a base like 85 or higher on their HP that's uh, like max HP, I'm not going to be able to take out. Um, but Cabellion, Nidoking, Hydreigon, uh, possibly even Mega Lop Bunny, um, if I find it necessary, I really have a... I really have Skarmory as that check, but um, mostly mostly we're looking at Cabalion, Nudo King, Hydreigon, uh, not even so much Tapu Bula because I figure it might be more bulkier. Uh, so that's kind of what we're dealing with as Selgor. It does have Bug Buzz, Final U-Turn, uh, and Sludge Bomb. U-Turn is basically, I want to leave this thing and if he doesn't send out Cabalion or Nido King turn one, I just kind of want to U-Turn out um, and, and go into something else. But if he does lead Cabellion or Nido King turn one, I think I'm probably just gonna click Final Gambit and try to take one of those out. Um, he's, his speed is uh, good to pretty much uh, outspeed everything on his team. Uh, I want to double check to make sure that I can still outspeed a Scarf Cabellion because I'm not 100% sure that I can now that I'm looking at it. So I'm gonna kind of revisit that and make sure I can uh, outspeed a, a Scarf Cabellion. Um, but as long as I can do that, I should be fine. Um, Salazzle. That's the next guy. We got Nasty Plot, Sludge Wave, Flamethrower, and Dragon Pulse. This thing does a lot of damage to his team, especially late game. Um, if he's got some wear and tear on him, it's definitely going to be able to plow through his team. It outspeeds most of his team except for the Mega Lop Bunny. Um, and then... 
I think that's actually, yeah, I think he outspeeds everything except the Mega Lock Bunny. I am predicting that he brings either Scarf Cabellion or Scarf Nidoking um, or Scarf Hydreigon. One of those three things could definitely uh, be a answer to Salazzle. So we have to watch out for that. Um, but Sludge Wave, Flamethrower, Dragon Pulse, all very, very good moves, especially after a nasty plot. I can pretty much wear and tear through his entire team. Uh, Pizonium Z is for either like Hydreigon um, if I need it or Volcanion. Uh, I can click that and I don't even know if I need to be plus two. Uh, it's going to do a tremendous amount of damage. Uh, it probably does min minimum like 90%. Um, I don't have the calculus in front of me but probably does somewhere in there. So as long as it has a little bit of damage done it should knock out uh, whatever I'm in front of. Uh, the only thing I have to play around with is the um, the Cabellion uh, and make sure that for instance if Sylveon's out and I go for the Sludge Wave he doesn't bring in Cabellion that's Scarfed and then he gets a free attack on me because I'm not going to keep my Salazzle in there so I gotta play around a few things because of his typings that he's, he's probably going to bring uh, but shouldn't be that too that much of an issue I think I have the models to, to play around him uh, so I think that we have a team uh, so far with the three mods we went over to really put a uh, a hole in his team, um, and that, that's the, that's the plan here, guys. That's the plan. So let's continue here. We have Latios, leftover psychic dragon pulse calm mind recover. Um, also going to be a little tricky because Sylveon and um, Hydreigon are going to be two issues there where I can't just click Psychic because Hydreigon could come in Scarfed and then Draco me. Um, or if I see Hydreigon, I can't Dragon Pulse because he could bring in the Sylveon. And then I have nothing really to hit the Sylveon with because Psychic's not going to do much. Um, I can't sit there and calm mind in front of it because Moonblast is going to take me out. So uh, Latios is going to be in a weird position until one of those two mons go. Um, another thing he could do is bring in the Cabellion, um, which resists both of those stabs. So... Um, Latios can do work um, as far as me making the right prediction on what could come in and just doing a little chip here and there. Cabellion and Hydreigon, well I'm sorry, um, Cabellion has no recovery. Uh, both Sylveon and Hydreigon could uh, with Moonlight and Roost, but I don't know if he brings Roost on the Hydreigon. I feel like it's going to be more of a choice set like I said. Um, but it could be a bulkier set. Uh, we'll have to kind of play that out and see uh, in the battle. But Latios is going to be a, a little tougher for, for him to have an impact. Uh, honestly, Latios is mostly there to take hits from uh, Nidoking Thunderbolts or Earth Powers or whatever kind of uh, stab he wants to bring. Um, and then also there to counteract the... Um, the Cabellion. Actually, uh, Cabellion doesn't resist Psychic. Uh, it's actually normal because it's fighting still. So he's not going to want to take those Psychic. So uh, discount what I said earlier. Uh, <clears throat> but still, I mean, if he's like a bulkier Cabellion, he probably can take a Psychic decently well because uh, it is only normally effective. Um, I'd have to run the calcs and see because I'm not 100% sure. Uh, I think that happened in Mox a little bit, but I don't remember what the outcome was. Uh, so moving on to more of a more of a heat set that I'm going to try out with Mimikyu. As you can see, I have the Salic Berry on him, play Rough Swords, then Substitute and Drain Punch. Um, Mimikyu can actually tear through this team if given the opportunity. Uh, the Salic Berry is going to be able to increase my speed by one stage, allowing me to pretty much outspeed his entire team uh, except for Scarfers, uh, and then be able to recover my health with Drain Punch. Um, if I can, I would love to be able to get a Swords Dance and have that Salic Berry pop, uh, be plus two, plus one, and then play Rup and Drain Punch absolutely wreck his team um, at plus two. Uh, now, it will con it will need some support from the other other Pokemon on the roster. Just getting the uh, Nido King uh, worn down a little bit. Cabellion should be worn down a little bit, maybe like seventy percent. That'd be really nice. Uh, Nido King needs to be probably around 50 to 60, and if Tepe Bulu comes, it probably needs to be around the 50 to 60 mark as well. Uh, but everything else I should be fine with. 
I do need to make sure that I have enough health when Lop Bunny comes out to take a quick attack. So I'm going to need at least 50% from that. Um, and that's going to be done by getting some Drain Punch Recovery. Uh, now, there is a lot of issues that are going to interfere with this plan. So this plan may not end up coming into fruition. Uh, but I'm excited to at least try it out. And if he gives me the opportunity, I'm definitely going to go in hard on this set and try to get up some kills with Mimikyu. Uh, Mimikyu has probably been one of my favorite mons this season, so I would love to get him a couple more kills. Um, next up, the last mod is going to be Choice Scarf Metacham, and that's going to be to deal with his really fast mons, some of his Scarfers, or his Mega Lop Bunny. Uh, we've got the Zen Headbutt, Poison Jab, High Jump Kick, and Baton Pass. Baton Pass is just to, if um, I'm bringing him out uh, early game, and he's still got a full roster to switch into Metacham to, to kind of take his high jump kicks or something like that. Um, I want to be able to baton pass and get some momentum. Um, for instance, say it's um, Metacham comes out after Cabellian kills something. Um, and A-Drive may say, hey, he's probably going for the high jump kick here. And so he goes into the, um, like Sylveon. Um, Sylveon should be able to take it pretty decently, or uh, actually he might even go to, into like Cafagragus if he brings Cafagragus, because that would actually be a really good play. Uh, but regardless, I can Baton Pass um, and not get Mummified or whatever, um, or, or not get in a position where Sylveon gets a free Moonblast off or Toxic or, or something like that. Um, and that's basically all that's there for, because his other three moves um, can pretty much do a tremendous amount of damage to him. It's unfortunate to have to like lock him into one of those things because he does have a lot of answers for those individual moves. So I've definitely got to play around appropriately, but that's that's really what the baton pass is for, is to make sure I don't get stuck in a bad place where I'm having to sack something off um, to, to make sure Medicham stays healthy. Uh, so yeah, that is my team for week four of the APA against Adrive and his St. Louis Rampardos. Again, guys, thank you so much for the support over the last four weeks. Um, y'all have been tremendous keep it up um, I would love to see the like button clicked smashed uh, demolished and I, I would love the likes to, to really start to, to grow because that really is something that makes me really happy to see um, is seeing like my videos increasingly get more likes so I really really appreciate that guys subscribe if you haven't already um, you know, but subscribe only if you like enjoy the content, if you enjoy the battles. Um, I don't want to just kind of be somebody in your subscription box that you don't care to watch. <clears throat> I mean, that doesn't make any sense for, for me or you. Uh, it should be a mutual relationship, right? Mutually beneficial. Um, you should sub to me uh, if you like to see the comment that I provide to you. So that's just my take on it. Um, but I hope you do enjoy the content and if you do again subscribe like the video comment down below go check out the other coaches in the league because they're all fantastic guys uh, we're having a tremendous season so far uh, on the fun level we're having a, a, a great season so far um, record wise not so much but to be honest we've been in every single match this this season every single match it's just came down to like the last two or three plays that have decided the match um, and you know hopefully we figure out how to win soon uh, it, it's doable I know we can do it this is the last match we're gonna have this roster week five we're gonna have a brand new team um, which I've, I've fully drafted for already I know the team I'm not gonna tell you right now I'm not gonna spoil that for you stay tuned though we will have that draft analysis coming to you uh, within probably the next five to seven days so that's super exciting. I think it's going to be on March 17th I'm going to unveil that draft. So uh, that might actually be tomorrow. Uh, no, Sunday. Sunday. So two days. Two days from now is when I'm going to unveil that draft. Um, so a little bit sooner than I just said. But uh, two days from now you'll see the new, the new team for uh, weeks 5, 6, 7, and 8. Uh, and that's where we're going to be standing, guys. Hopefully we can pick up one win with this team. Because uh, I really enjoy using this team. I think it's a lot of fun to use. Um, if you're ever in a draft league and you're drafting, I recommend definitely trying out a Selgor, Salazzle, and Mimikyu. They're both, or all three, really, really fun to use. 
I've enjoyed them a lot this season, um, and I definitely look forward to trying them again. If we make playoffs, which is looking a little rocky right now, uh, we will definitely see these guys again. Uh, but as of right now, guys, I'm going to get out of here, and I will see you guys later. Peace.